Welcome to Student Success with PBIS. We are from Bethel Tate Middle School from Bethel, Ohio. I am Jamie Lewis and I am the art teacher here at the school. I'm Marie Reynolds and I'm the school counselor. And I'm Colleen Gaffney and I'm the PE teacher here at the middle school. Bethel is a, Bethel is a small town um, 20, about 25 miles east of downtown Cincinnati. We are considered rural. We do have grades 6th, 7th, and 8th in our middle school, and we have approximately 360-some students. We do have a smaller um, staff, staff size. We have 25 teachers. Um, we have a principal and an assistant principal, one counselor, and so our administrative staff um, is on the smaller side. Um, we do have, um, for our demographics, for our students, we are on a 41% free and reduced um, lunch program. So our students do struggle and they do experience poverty. So we try to put in place things that help them, like the tiger packs, which are free, which are packs that they take home for the weekend. All right, what is PBIS? PBIS is Positive Behavior Intervention Supports. Um, and this helps our students as well as our staff create a very positive environment within our school. Um, PBIS um, in general is building positive relationships with our students, setting and teaching behavior expectations that we expect within our school walls, as well as what we expect in our community up in town. Um, it is creating a safe and positive school climate, increase academic performance, reducing unwanted behaviors, and improving school attendance. So when we got started, um, we did a lot, the, the first committee put together, we did training with the PBIS program and then we came back to our staff and we had staff involvement as well as student involvement in the process. And so we came up with our um, motto as following the tiger way. And we have this painted in various places throughout the entire building. It's even on our front doors um, as you come into our building. And then we broke it down into our three traits that we would be looking for. And that was be respectful, be responsible, and be a problem solver. We felt those were good things for middle school students to work on. Um, like I said, students are um, constantly reminded of following the Tiger Way and what the expectations are for those. And we have posted around the building those expectations. This is our uh, eighth year um, implementing PBIS here at our middle school. And uh, this is our part of our matrix that our students actually helped create the first year um, to help with behaviors that we are wanting from them. Um, our st staff teaches this at the beginning of every school year. It is also in our agendas and on our webpage. And throughout the years, we have made changes when we see that they need to be done. This is an example of one of the posters that we have here at the middle school. Um, this is for a classroom setting. So it goes to show how they can be respectful, be responsible, and be a problem solver in the classroom setting. We have these um, throughout the building, like Mrs. Reynolds said, um, in the hallways, the cafeteria, the lunchroom, the office, bathrooms, and it's a great visual for students to see every day. All right, our PBIS assembly. So what we do every year at the start of the school year, the very first week of school, um, the teachers will go over the matrix, what Colleen just mentioned. They'll go over our expectations, our slogan. Um, and then at the end of the week, we put on a performance. Um, and the performance is Oscar worthy. Um, <laughs> So what we do is, we've been doing this for about five years now, 
and we always pick a new place in the school to show students how we expect them to behave. So this year, which some of these photos are taken, um, we did an assembly based on how you should behave in a classroom. So I was the bad student, not following the tiger way. Colleen was the great student, goody goody, <laughs> following the tiger way. So I would come in, I had um, a tank top on, I had short shorts, I had a hat on backwards, basically things that um, are, are dress coded. Um, I also was talking on my cell phone, which isn't allowed. Um, I came in eating food, um, which is shouldn't be. Um, and then I did everything that a student, student shouldn't do. Colleen, on the other hand, was prepared with all of her books. She was dressed in the correct dress code. She was um, prepared with a pencil. She was following the tiger way, asking if I needed a pencil that she would let me borrow one. Once we did our skit and the students got a big good laugh at it, we then did a questionnaire, question and answer, and we asked, what did myself, what did Mrs. Lewis do that was not following the tiger way? And they were able to label every single one. We then said, what did Colleen do to, or Miss Gaffney do that was following the tiger way? And they were able to list everything. We then asked some students, what is our slogan to um, review what their teachers had taught them that week? They were ever able to answer it. So our assembly skits are actually a fun way for the kids to laugh, um, but also take in how they should behave. We've done hallways before. We've taught how to behave in the cafeteria, in the bathroom, and the PE locker rooms, um, so or gym locker rooms. So um, that is part of our skit that we do. All right, some of the activities that we do here at BTMS to help motivate our students, we actually have a blast coming up with these. Um, and the students truly love these. We try to do these quite often, um, especially after the pandemic um, and things have been so different for them. Um, you know, we wanna make school back to where, how it used to be. So adding out all these extra little activities um, really goes a long way for the students. They've even have told us how thankful they are that we do these. Um, so some of the ones that we do, you can see up here, we do a turkey trot um, that the where they we um, our schools are in a campus setting um, and we have a one mile track around the schools and so we can take them onto the track. They pay two dollars and they walk around the track and that's part of a fundraiser. Um, we do Tiger Games. Tiger Games is the end of a year field day um, that we do kind of minute to win it games rather than your normal track and field. Um, so that is something that we do. We do a dodgeball tournament. The dodgeball tournament is probably the best. Um, the kids say that this is the best thing by far. Um, it is another fundraiser that we do for PBIS to raise money for our Tiger Store, which we'll go into a little bit later. Um, and basically, it's an all-day dodgeball tournament. Um, if they can dodge a wrench, they can dodge a ball. <laughs> um, so um, they pay $5 each. They get a team of eight, so it's $40 per team. The kids really get into this. They um, color code their outfits. Sometimes the night before, they go over to one person's house and make all t-shirts. Um, they love this, and we always do this the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, um, which is kind of a day where the kids are just anxious to get out anyway. Uh, we do a costume war. Um, grade level wise, we do a month of love in February that ties in with Valentine's Day and it's one whole week of promoting kindness. Um, the students always look forward to this. Uh, we do an ugly Christmas sweater contest along with the ugly Christmas, or not ugly Christmas, Christmas Spirit Week um, where we do different activities. We have contests. We have a red and green day. We do Christmas trivia um, that they can win candy. Um, so it, there's a lot of things that we do. We're getting ready to do our bunny hop. Um, so that will be our next um, activity we're getting ready to do. 
So since we have so many kids that are following the Tiger Way, we wanted to reward them for that and give them a little extra incentive for that. So we came up with uh, Tiger of the Month, which is basically like Student of the Month. And these students are selected by their teachers for following the Tiger Way, by being respectful, responsible, problem solvers, and just all around great kids. Um, and they get their pictures displayed on the Tiger Way wall when they get selected for that for the whole month. And this is uh, right when you walk into our building so that everyone can see it. They also get cool t-shirts that we are wearing when they get selected as Tiger of the Month, which they love getting. Um, and we see them wearing them in the hallways, proud to be selected. Another thing that our uh, staff does is create videos. And these videos are stating why the students got selected for Tiger of the Month. They kind of started out at the beginning um, doing them by just stating how they were being responsible, uh, problem solvers, and being respectful. But now it has gotten into a friendly, fun competition between all the staff, and they really get into it. This is a great one that we're going to show you right now. with our students and the, the kids just love seeing them and being a part of it, they are selected. All right, Tiger Points. So we wanted to come up with the way um, in the beginning of starting PBIS, what can we do to for students that do follow the Tiger Way? And we wanted a way to reward them. So we needed to then figure out how what could we see in order to see that they would get a reward? So then we came up with points. So what we used to do pre-pandemic, we used to give out tiger tokens. We called them tiger tokens, they were poker chips. But anytime a student did something good, whether it was helping a student in a hallway, carrying a lunch tray for somebody that couldn't, we would then give them a tiger token. Um, they would keep these tiger tokens in their locker, um, binder, book bag, and then once a month we have a tiger store, which we will go over in a bit. Um, and they were able to go up there and redeem their tiger tokens. Once the pandemic hit and we were fearful of them uh, changing hands, um, we then needed to come up with a new idea. So then we went to Class Dojo, and Class Dojo has been wonderful. Um, so now every teacher in the building, um, every staff member, custodians, um, lunch ladies, they have downloaded the app. It is on their phone or it's on their computer, and they are able to bring it up, bring their name up, click a point right away. It is also great because now it gives the students their responsibility to keep track of how many that they have. This has also helped um, more so than the tiger tokens because the tiger tokens have gotten lost. Um, unfortunately, sometimes they were stolen. Um, they were left at home the day of the tiger store. Um, so now- they took them from their grandparents. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had somebody <laughs> buy a pack at Kroger. Um, so now we, um, we are able to, they are able to manage it and we are able to manage it. Um, some of the things that they will get a tiger point for, um, holding the door open for a classmate, um, picking things up for a classmate. Um, for example, um, I being the art teacher, I had a student um, spill a cup of water yesterday on a table um, when we were painting. And instead of just him cleaning it up and the other three just kind of staring at him, all three, all four of them jumped out of their seat went and got paper towels and immediately started cleaning up the mess. It wasn't just a one person thing. Um, and so the, the other three I then gave tiger points to and I said thank you for helping him instead of just looking at him. Um, so that was something I gave a tiger point for. Um, we always give tiger points um, for homework if they are responsible enough to bring their homework back. What we don't give points for are academic grades. Um, we just felt like um, 
it's not fair to a student who may not do as well in school um, to not be able to get points for that. So um, it is the token or the points are based off behavior um, and not so much academics. All right, now to our BTMS Tiger Store. So our Tiger Store has evolved over the years. It used to be a cart, um, and we didn't have many reward, many prizes on there. We have candy, some pencils, um, folders, um, generic school supplies. Um, but we were eventually, about three, four years ago, able to take a storage room and turn it into our store. I know it might be kind of hard to see, um, but it is fairly decent size. Um, we got clothes hangers in there, um, shelving. So now our Tiger store is booming. Um, <laughs> the things that we have in there, we have candy, slime. Slime is really popular. Um, snack foods, of course, um, school supplies, books. Uh, we try to find out what books the students are liking. Um, of course, we got the water bottle stickers that are like the cool thing right now. Um, and uh, the students come up once a month. Um, they get about 10 minutes in the store, um, so there isn't a whole lot of time to shop. Um, they do check their computers prior to coming up to see how many uh, dojo points they have. That way when they come up, we have our laptop and it's basically, we're like a cashier. They come through with a pencil that costs two points. We subtract two points from their account and now they have the reward and we redeem their two points. Um, the students love this. They ask over and over when, when is our turn? We do have some students that are absent during that time. Um, unfortunately, we do this during our uh, plan time. Um, so we don't have a lot of time to just take up any absent students. Um, so they would then wait to the following month. Um, but it is a um, great resource for the kids. Um, something we also do are instant gratification awards. Um, some kids need that um, gratification right away. So teachers have candy in their own room, um, but they also make up different rewards. For example, they may say, okay, um, you can pay five tiger tokens and you can wear your ball hat all day. Um, so we get that a lot um, because some of those kids can't wait for the months to come um, and they need that right now. So I think you can see from our PBIS program that we definitely had the behavior and the positive, looking for the positive and the positive behaviors. And one key thing that we noticed that we were missing was the emotional wellness or the um, well-being of our students, their emotional side. So in 2017, BTMS, um, we started our trauma-sensitive training with our high schools at work coach, Tim Nolan. Um, from our training, we were able to create a calming room. Um, at first, it was just kind of a hodgepodge of this, what, who could donate what, a comfortable chair, a couch, you know, not a couch, but a coffee table and a rug, and um, just some fidget things in there, some coloring things for kids um, to have. Our purpose for the calming room was to give the students that needed a, that needed a place to be outside of the classroom for five to 10 minutes to refocus themselves, calm down, um, pull themselves back together. And our goal was to get them back, get them to return to class and be, and be successful then back in the classroom. So um, we applied for a grant through our Claremont County uh, Mental Health Board and we were granted $700. And so from that, we were able to add um, a fish tank, a bubble wall, um, light therapy, some other things that students could use while they were in there. So as you can see, um, when the students come into the calming room and there's, they can um, ask to come to the calming room, ask their teacher, you know, if they're having a bad morning or something's happened at home that they need to go down and they need to um, refocus themselves. Um, they can ask their teachers. And then there's also the side where if teachers see that there's a student in the classroom that is struggling either with frustration or anxiety, um, that they can 
ask the student, you know, I need you to go down to the calming room. You look like you need to um, refocus yourself and, um, you know, have a little, have some time to calm down. We have, we, from the pandemic, we have increased the amount of students that are experiencing panic attacks, anxiety, and higher levels of frustration. So we found that having the calming room is definitely a place that benefits not only the students, but also our teachers. And I have some data to go over from the calming room. And as, I don't know if you can see, but as above, when we first started the calming room pre-pandemic, um, it was a slow start. We had 41 um, students, 41 visits to the calming room with 11 different students. So we were noticing that in that year, we had the calming room was being used, but it was being used by a repeated number of students, which was good because when it comes to our um, ED students, it definitely was giving them a place to go and a place where their intervention specialist could have, um, have that on their IEP and have that available to them. So then in, when the pandemic hit in 2019 and 20, we had, um, 82 we had 82 visits to the calming room with 32, and that was just a half a year um, because the, the second half we were out. Last year with our COVID restrictions where our teachers moved from class to class and our students stayed within, we did notice um, lower anxiety from our students um, and we had only, we had 44 visits from 15 different students. So we did notice for our anxious students um, that by them remaining in the same classroom all day, it did get boring, but, and the <laughs> teachers did not like having to move, but we did notice that the calming room and we had restrictions in the calming room as far as um, the COVID restrictions go. So this year we kind of felt like we were getting a, back, back to somewhat normal. Um, we, had, we have had, as of now, um, 66 visits, and if I count the one today, that will be 67 <laughs> visits to the calming room and a number of 38 different students. So as you can see, there is definitely a high need for this, and we feel that it's a, it's a very good intervention, a positive intervention for our students that helps them with their attendance, their frustrations, and having, having us have the ability for them to stay here at school and not have to leave. Um, also, we wanted to tie in our discipline with our PBIS. Um, we were noticing that we had tier one pretty much under control and we were doing the um, tiger points and we had the matrixes and we had the signs up and everything around the school but we wanted to move into that level two tier. So we started looking at our school discipline and um, part of our professional development at the beginning of this year was um, to go over and create a flow chart that would follow under the PBIS um, positive base strategies, but also um, allow for administration to have some guidelines on what we needed to, to do for uh, discipline. So along with this, that goes with our discipline, there are many times that we use, um, well, we created a ROAR card. And a ROAR card, it's, it's kind of like a behavior plan, but it's kind of not, because it not only can be used for maybe students' behaviors within the classroom or within the school, but it also can be used as a motivational tool or even, um, and a, even an attendance, um, an attendance um, chart. Um, I have worked with several students with the um, attendance, and we we um, find three things that they need to work on. And our goal is to improve their rate of being here, um, having their work ready to go, and um, being ready for school. So we use the reward card on a weekly basis and then they are rewarded if they've earned so many points that week for the, for the um, reward. 
So we had a bunch of students that were constantly coming up to us saying, hey, so-and-so deserves a tiger point or a tiger token. So we started, uh, we came up with a way that students could take the responsibility to nominate peers that are following the tiger way. And we have a cop following tiger way card that students can fill out in the hallway and drop it in a box. And then every week, it, uh, two students get picked and they get their name called and it explain, they it is said over the announcements what they did. For example, if they saw someone pick someone's book up in the hallway, if they dropped it, and they get called down and they get um, a prize. Sometimes it's candy or a gift certificate to a local restaurant. All right, so not only do we like to motivate our students, but we also feel it is extremely important to motivate um, our staff. Um, we feel if our staff feels appreciated, um, that rubs off in their teaching, um, in the classroom, which then um, transfers to the student um, to make them happy. Um, so we try to create a positive atmosphere for everybody. So some of the things that we do for our teachers, um, we do a staff member of the month. Um, and what that is, students will email me um, any staff member of the building. It could be an office worker, it could be um, a lunch lady, a custodian, a teacher's aide, um, and they have to give me three reasons why they felt that this teacher deserved, or this staff member deserved it, um, and not just their goal. Um, we like to get real answers, um, and the teachers love to see this. Um, they then become famous on Facebook. Um, we then do a kind word stick tree um, that we talked about that we do month of love, um, but they are also written to the teachers and they will also receive those afterwards. Um, state test luncheons. Um, so for example, we had a state test um, last week and we did a luncheon with a local restaurant here in town. So we're supporting our local businesses as well as making our teacher or staff members happy. Um, we decorate the lounge. Something so simple um, really brings cheer to them. Um, so any type of holiday um, or season that's in um, coming up, uh, we just decorate the lounge just to look more cozy. Um, we do staff spirit dress up days. Um, so for example, the last week leading into, or the last day leading into spring break, we did um, a Hawaiian like vacation theme. Um, and it was just fun. Everyone wore lays or, you know, straw hats. Um, pick me up bags. Um, oh, a coffee truck. At one of our staff in-service meetings, we just had a coffee truck come and um, was the teachers were able to um, buy coffee so that was something very simple that we didn't have to go anywhere to go and get coffee so we wanted to check to see how valid our PBIS program was with our staff and um, some of our students so this was the staff survey and we found out that when we surveyed our staff a hundred percent of them knew what our slogan was 100% knew what our three traits were, and 100% um, um, said that they were taught the program when they started here at Bethel Tate or they were on the committee, that they, they knew the ins and outs of our PBIS program. But when we got to our Tiger Tokens, we only had 93% say that they were um, handing those out on a regular basis. So as you see, we do have some things that we have to work on and we will be always be surveying our students and our staff to make those improvements. Well, that is all we have for you guys today. Um, I hope you enjoyed our presentation and we hope you have student success with PBIS in your <laughs> building. <laughs>